Hey everybody, Mikey Warren with Academy of Martial Studies here with Matt. We're putting this short clip together as a review, mostly for Matt's sake, and so some of you guys can get an idea on some of the other aspects of wrist controls, uh, form controls, torso controls, and how to change momentum when somebody's trying to get a hold of you. So to begin with, no, this isn't uh, technically Hapkido or Aikido. This isn't a flow drill. This is a understanding of the carpal tunnel region, the ulna, the radius, and how to manipulate those to gain control of the larger joints like the elbow and up into our shoulders. These grips are started like grab my wrist, no my other wrist, the other way, like Rick's going do, just so that you get a feel for how to start moving your opponent instead of trying to lift and muscle and resist. And once you have that understanding of how circular motions, how your body stepping and moving and cutting angles can make it easier for you to get leverage to overcome somebody who might be larger, stronger, or have the drop on you, we transition to more advanced control so that once you have that escape, just get away, hey, it's my hand, let it go, we can start to control the other person's arm or wrist. Now, why would we want to do that? When somebody's punching you, <laughs> you're not going to catch it. You're not going to do that BS Steven Seagal movie wannabe nonsense from that fat guy, and that's coming from me, so that's pretty fat. But if there are legitimate weapon threats, like a knife, and that person's in close, as generally people tend to be with a knife, it's not very often you're back here trying to get them, you're going to be in close. And that may work for once. See Matt's basic motion, just parry it away. Now granted, I would prefer when he does that to use the back of his hand just in case, slow motion, just like he did the first time, in case I shave that. So if he uses the back of the hand or across, any, any which one you want, yeah, minimizes that and it kind of gets it away from your center lines where most of your vital organs and a whole lot of stuff that gets stabbed or sliced open, you're just having a bad day. So we can learn to take control of that, especially if somebody's grabbed hold of us and they're determined to just sew us up, stitch us up with this thing, okay? So we can start to take advantage until we can control the weapon, get further away, or put our weapon into either the neck or shoot them or whatever the case may, may require. So with that caveat, these techniques are to teach us how to control the forearm, elbow, shoulder. We do it from standing at first because most of the time, if somebody's coming at us with a knife, we're gonna do it standing. Now it does go to the ground. For those friends of mine that are of the blue and purple and brown and black belts in Gracie Jiu Jitsu, I am one of the dark ones. I do believe in both wrist locks and uh, heel hooking and you know toe hooking and ankle locks, even on white belts, they, they just need to see it. Russian Sambo get players start with their knee locks and uh, ankle and toe holds from the very beginning. So there's people that are practicing it. If you need to use this for actual self-defense, be aware of it. So again, these movements are to start to mitigate the threats from more dangerous weapons. So with that, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of the basic movements, just a couple different angles so you can see that. Some ways to make it more advanced, to add some more mobility to it. And then for Matt's sake, we'll slowly walk him through so he can see where he's at and review that later. Go ahead and put this away. So to start with, we're gonna go with the real simple one. It's called a same side wrist grab. So that's because I'm reaching same side. What we call cross wrist grab is when I reach across my body. So Matt's gonna grab on the same side. Now, common sense says the thumb is the weakest part of a grip when grabbing something syringical. So the simplest thing to do is just come up towards the thumb and you know bang away, that's great. But again, we're trying to look at ways to potentially take that knife and control it or to strip it away to get out of that threat. So to start with, I'm going to be making a very slight step to the outside, try to get behind him out of his initial line of attack. My hand's gonna flex open. That immediately puts some strain on his grip. And I'm going to use this step to make a nice circle. I'm not lifting up, I'm circling around to the outside of his wrist. Now this thumb, and the rest of my fingers are going to grab. At the same time that I step, this hand is going to be hitting and reaching to grab between his pinky knuckle and his index knuckle. Again, I'm making another like Lego grip, C grip. So I have a C grip and I have a C grip. Now, I'm going to point my fingers so you can see that I'm wringing his wrist. I'm going to wring it to put as much twist as possible on the wrist. I'm not holding my hands on the wrist to reinforce it, I'm holding it between index, thumb, pinky, wrist. This is reinforcing. 
and I want to point his fingers out. Okay. If his arm goes straight, it's not as painful. So as long as I keep a good grip on the hand, I can hit and make what's the Z shape. Okay. All together. This is the classic one, okay? But I don't particularly dig that so much because it still kind of keeps me in his line of sight. He may have another knife, may have his gun, who knows? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that basic motion. Now note, Matt, give me a lot of resistance. I want to reinforce that this is a circular arm motion, not a vertical, because if I just try to lift, not happening. Now if I keep good tight resistance, I just make a little circle, it's there. Once I have this grip, yeah, I can do a quick snap and break it, but that doesn't end the threat. He's still 75% combat limb effective. So I'm gonna use the side of my body, the forearm that's closest to him, okay? Boom, to use this forearm to drive him, if I can come up under his elbow, that's great, and down and away, okay? So I can get out, get one for the homies, proper burial, go about your mission, whatever you may need, okay? So, all together from this one, it's boom, circle, and just use that form, okay? Cross grip. This one's just like we're shaking hands. Hey, how you doing? Uh, strength and honor. So he's got my wrist. Instead of going in front of him, again, we wanna get behind our opponent. So I'm just gonna look at the book in my hand, like, hmm. That immediately puts that Z set up. Now, I, I think this is a really good chapter, so I want to show him what I'm reading. I want him to really get a good grip on that. Now, with this right here, if I grab, his hand's gonna let go. So I wanna really keep him captivated. So as it goes here, I'm gonna slap and I'm gonna trap his index finger to my radius, okay? So I slap, wrap, trap, and then I'm gonna try to bring this hand all the way around his form, keeping this hand locked, boom, okay? One more time all together. Slap, wrap, trap, bow. This is the correct, correct, nice beginner white belt way, but we're gonna add that step to get around and get out of the threat zone. Slap, wrap, trap. Again, the forearm that's closest to your opponent catches up under the elbow, can slide out to his shoulder, and I have this pulling, pushing, pulling. I wanna extend the limbs so that any of the joints that I'm working against have the maximum amount of tension, tightness possible. It makes it easier to injure and control. Now we're gonna go into the two on one. Okay, so he's gonna grab both of my limbs. Now I'm gonna just offset a little bit. What I can do from here, obviously I got this, I got head butts, all oh, that's fine. But we wanna get the concept of mastering the limb control. So I'm gonna bring both palms up. One hand is gonna be between his two hands and one of my hands is gonna be on top. That hand that's in the middle is gonna grab his top hand. Thumb up, that's just like our first single hand, we just bring the thumb up, so we're seeing that repeated, boom. And from here, I want to slide down my arm that's now between his two hands. The idea is that I want to come under these knuckles because I wanna take his fingers and push them past his shoulder. So I'm going to do this. Slide, so I can grab. Slide, grab, push. And this hand comes up to the elbow, because let's face it, he can be pretty heavy and strong, so I want this back leg to step with me to push and pin. And that will throw somebody pretty hard. So again, I'll do it up here, boom, step. Okay, show you from the other side. Here, step. Okay. That's good, that's white belt. Let's step up to a little bit of realism now. So, this is a little bit more advanced, but the concept's identical. I'm going to bring my hands together, palms up, pull. This hand is all I really need to keep control of him for a moment. He can still come up and rip up against my thumb, all right? So once I'm up here, I got two on one. Now. I'm going to bring my outside shoulder to his near side, and I'm going to continue to pull him in front of me as I make a 360, okay? So as I go here, pulling, shoulder, other shoulder, 
Now I'm keeping my body weight forward and I'm pulling his weight down and in front of me so he can't counter. I'm using my shoulder as the fulcrum on his so that when this front foot steps back, game over. Use the force that time. Now, that's quite wise. So to show that together, I'm coming here two on one and I'm throwing. Okay. From the other side, I'm here two on one and I'm throwing. It's that simple. Once this foot that's close to him steps, I've got a hell of a throw. So this is cross double. Now, the good old fashioned, hey, how you doing? Somebody comes up here and they just grab your stuff, try to throw the, your, uh, the back of your favorite head up against the wall, ask you if you paid your dues. Just remember what old Mikey Warren and Jack Burton said, yes sir, checks in the mail, then break the wrist, walk away. So he's gonna grab, real simple, ear claps. So you can do double, you can hit the thumbs, you can do all that cool stuff, the crowd guy stuff, yeah, mess the guy up. But there's more options. Dude might be on PCP, stuff may not work, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn my body as I hit. See how that stretches his arms? Boom! I'm coming over top, I have both arms trapped, and I'm reaching all the way around under his pinky here, grabbing the pad of his palm. From here, I'm going to turn back to face him with two on one. See this lock position again? His arm's straight. I can Z it if I wanna do the white belt stuff, or his arm straight, the form that now comes closest to him pushes, and I use a circular motion to control the limb. I'll do the other side this time on the double. So I'm going bang, bang. And you're seeing a lot of this movement, this push, pull, push the shoulder, pull the wrist and hand, because regardless of how they grab you, if you're able to get to a position, as a very smart man named Ron Don Vito once taught me, the simpler you make your finishing moves, the more like they are, the more likely it is you're gonna be able to use it in a panic situation or in a life or death situation or fight or flight. So the idea is, is he's trying to get control, I can even do this up against a wall because I'm using the lateral motion. So I'm going here and I'm turning back and I'm using that wall to slam his head into him whatever the situation may require. So it's over, turn, and let that form push as your hand pulls. Uh, now we understand that cool guy pose that a lot of Kung Fu actors use, all right? Now the next one is classic. He's starting to set up for a rear naked. As soon as I see this arm going, I'm gonna be like, man, oh, I should have paid attention. Tucking my chin. As his one limb, he's about to start to try to sink that full near naked choke in, but we're standing, so I got mobility. So I'm going to use two on one. Sink my chin, grab at the elbow and it's on his forearm or wrist, tuck, and I'm going to take my leg that's inside of us. I'm going to bow forward, step around and behind. Once I'm here, I still have his elbow and his wrist. I'm going to push and drive. The idea is to try to get this arm snap forward over his shoulder. Dislocating the shoulder, breaking the arm. Okay. And so I'm here, I'm like, oh man, this, this is not good. So I step, pull my head up. This is the control, okay? This is the leverage point. Keep better, two on one, snap. Just literally snap. If you want to do it really nasty, once you're here, you can push, pull, and snap. So you can literally jank, yank it right out. Jank it. Is that a word? Just jank it out. Did you jank his arm? No. That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. So Matt's going to get to see where he's at. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast and relaxes without any resistance. Same side grab. Good. Same side grab advanced. Boom. Good. Cross grip. Mm -hmm. What do you forget to do, folks? Secure. There you go. Good. <laughs> and advance. Look at you that. Wow. There we go. And take that step. Good. 
his most favorite now, the double. Mm. All right, so he's yeah. gonna cross. He's doing that part right. Pull it up, slide down the arm. There you go. Good. Again, same thing. Good. And the advance. Okay, so with this hand that's coming up, what should your foot be doing, Matt? Same side the hand moves, body moves, okay? See, he's already halfway to his throw. All right, so you got your pull, 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 and boom, throw, good. Again. Good. All right. Boom. Okay, which one are you doing? Hmm? Your choice. Okay. Now, let's look at something. Uh, yeah, I... Matt's kind of magical. He can grab my wrist without grabbing my whole hand. Thumb. Fingers. Got it. All right, let's try that again. Boom. There it is. Good. Again, same thing. Boom. Good. And now the advanced side. Boom. There you go. You want to step behind me, not in front of me. I can kick you if you're in front of me. I can kick you if you're beside or behind me too, but not if you're flinging me on my face. Boom. Good. And tuck the chin, two on one, step, lift, good. Again, other side, step, lift, good, snap, all right. So those are just some basic concepts. These develop into knife controls. These develop into sword techniques, stick fighting techniques, barrel deflections, okay? If Yeah, it's unloaded, all right. If he's got something in close to me, just by some chance it may be a mugging, if he gets distracted, something's, something plays in my favor and I get a hold of this the outside, I use that same motion. But I have a barrel, it makes it even easier, I've got a handle. If he's got me from behind and maybe he's pointing at the cops, like you guys get out of here, whatever, I might have an opportunity to take that up. Smack. This is, <laughs> well, he might kill you anyway, so take your best shot. But likelihood is, yeah, I'll kill this dude. You better back up. That's your moment. Good. Now, he's got my arm, but you can grab that barrel. Good. Now let's show that from behind. All right. You guys better back up. That's your moment. Step under. Use the barrel. There you go. Same thing with the knives. I may grab him to try to stab. Now what? <laughs> What's the biggest threat? Oh boy. Okay, so Sakai. There we go, take that into me. The motions he has aren't pre-planned. This little part we're doing now, I didn't tell him. This is showing that once you start to feel where the joints get locked, you can start to, to capitalize on that, okay? He grabs my wrist, he goes to stab me. I might go here. Okay, here's what I did in slow motion. He grabbed my wrist, I'm like, oh crap, a knife. Brought my palm down, brought my hands together. Starting to look familiar. All right? So, they grab my wrist, no my other wrist, no the other way. Break the wrist, walk away. Most the of the time, most of the people that do that don't understand any of the concepts behind it. So, with everything, take this, play with it. Take what works for you. Get rid of what doesn't. Add what is essentially your own, okay? So with that, everybody, and I thank you. Uh, hit us up on tapping won't save you. Duck it up.